this is Frode and welcome to another episode of Actualize Notes TV. Today I have another great book, Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. Way of the Peaceful Warrior, subtitle, a book that changes lives. Dan Millman is a graduate at the University of California at Berkeley. After uh, becoming a world trampoline champion and a member of the Gymnastics Hall of Fame, he served as a director of gymnastics at Stanford University. He has written dozens of books, among them Sacred Journey of the Peaceful Warrior and The Life You Were Born to Live, books that have inspired millions of readers around the world. The Way of the Peaceful Warrior is basically a story between the main characters, Dan, and a guy he calls Socrates, who is a, was a gas, is a gas station attendant, who is a really wise guy. And although this book is a novel, it's got a lot of practical tips that we can apply to our own lives, especially because um, Dan has written a lot upon the subject of having a purpose in life. So, we got a bit, bunch of my favorite big ideas that I'm excited to explore. Let's start with the first one. Knowledge versus Wisdom. In the book, the character Socrates teaches us the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And the difference is that when you have knowledge about something, you understand how it works, or how it is. For example, you can sit in the passenger seat of a car, and you understand how you're driving a car, using the clutches and, um, and the pedals. But you really don't have the wisdom about driving a car before you realize it. So knowledge is understanding, wisdom is realizing how it is. That's when you actually sit down and drive a car. You can get a feel of it. You really feel how it's done. Another example um, from my life is that before I started um, ensuring that I got eight hours of sleep every single night, I understood, I had the knowledge that sleep is really a key to having a great mood and energy throughout the day. But I really didn't realize it, get the wisdom of it, before I actually did it and prioritized it, getting eight hours of sleep every single night. So therefore I'm curious, is there something you have the knowledge about, you understand that you should do every single day, that's good for you, but you're not doing it? Well, is it time for you to realize it and get some wisdom, body wisdom, as Socrates calls it in the book? Well, the next big idea is let it go. He, um, Socrates in the book teaches then about meditation and how it, um, how you can use it to cut free of your mind. And it consists of two basic steps. First step, you receive insight about your thoughts. In other words, you notice your thoughts. And the second step, you, you surrender your attachment to your thoughts. In other words, you realize that your thoughts are not you, and therefore you can let them go whenever you'd like. And he shares a great story to drive this point home. A Zen, a, Zen, a meditation student, was once sitting in a deep silence among a, a group of other practitioners. And terrified by a vision of blood and death and demons, he walked up to his... Uh, walked up and walked over to his meditation teacher and said, Ruchi, Ruchi, is, um, I just had a horrible, ho horrible vision. And his teacher just said, let it go. And uh, so, a little time later, when uh, that, um, the same student was sitting and uh, enjoying erotic fantasies, insights into the meaning of life, visions about angels and same things like that, the meditation teacher came over to him and hit him, whacked him in his head with a stick, and said, let it go. When Dan heard this story that Socrates told him, he said, yeah, that's uh, really funny, Socrates. And I was thinking, and uh, when he said that, I was thinking, then Socrates gave him a whack at his head with a carrot, and he said, let it go. So, are you having a meditation practice so you can... Train your mind to have insight into your thoughts, notice them, 
and then surrender your attachment to them. You can just let them go. Well, if you aren't, get on that. Our third big idea is flow, go. So Dan is on his way to one of his friend's cafes. This friend is named Joseph. And uh, when he is on his way, he can see some uh, fire trucks rushing past him. And he doesn't think about it. But then, when he sees uh, the charred down cafe of his friend Joseph, he realizes that the fire trucks were going there. And he hears a loud scream of anguish from um, Joseph. And Joseph drops down on his knees and starts crying. But by the time Dan has arrived at the cafe, he says, I'm so sorry, Joseph. And Joseph simply answers, smiling. He says, Me too. And Dan can't understand why Joseph is smiling when his cafe has just burned down. But then he remembered the words of Socrates, the wise old sage. He said, Let feelings flow. Then let them go. So you first need to really feel into your feelings and experience it, whether it's sadness, anger, or joy, for that sake. And then you need to let them go. Don't let them distract you from doing what you need to do. For example, if somebody screams at you, your boss, or your, your parent, your co-workers, you can be a bit anxious about it for a few minutes. But you don't want to go around being anxious about it with the rest of the day, the rest of the week, month, or year, do you? Well, then you need to let feelings flow at first and really feel them. They're, they're giving you a signal about something that you need to think about. And then let them go. And um, Ross Harris echoes the same wisdom in The Confidence Gap, where he talks about the acronym NAME. Which basically stands for, you need to notice your thoughts or feelings, then you need to acknowledge them. You simply say, here's the feeling of uh, fear, or here's the feeling of anger. You don't say, I am feeling anger, because you want to detach from it. Here's the feeling of anger. Then you make space, you breathe into the anger. Find where it really, where, where it is, the feeling of anger, if it is in your beating heart, if you can feel uh, like a temperament is increasing in your head. And then you expand your awareness and uh, get back to what you need to get done. So let feelings flow, then let them go. Notice, acknowledge, make space, and expand your awareness. Our fourth big idea is happiness equals satisfaction divided by desires. Then in the book asks uh, Socrates, do you think rich people are more happy than poor stiffs like us? And then Socrates answers that no he doesn't, because, um, and he um, writes this equation down, and he says, no, the, the peaceful warrior has the insight and discipline to understand the difference between needs and wants. Because we have infinite wants, but we just have a few basic needs. For example, there's just so much food you need to survive. But you might desire more and more food in an infinite stream of meals or, or snacking. For example, didn't, haven't you heard about billionaires who have died miserable? And haven't you seen people weighing over 500 pounds, maybe up to a thousand pounds, and still can't get enough food. That's not a need, that's a want. And Socrates concludes by saying that the secret to happiness, you see, is not found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less. Develop the capacity to enjoy less. The way I do that is that at least one meal a day, and often more, then I eat no sugar or added sweetener, so there's only the pure tastes of the food left. And even though the food doesn't taste as much, 
I find it amazing how much I can actually enjoy a meal. Especially because I uh, like uh, feeling disciplined. So therefore I'm asking you, how can you develop your capacity to enjoy less? Yes, enjoy less. As happiness equals your satisfaction divided by your desires. Few needs, but endless wants. And our last big idea, which I really love, snap back. Socrates asks, what time is it? And Dan answers, it's 2 to 35. Wrong, Socrates says. The time is, the time was, is, and always will be now. Now is the time. The time is now. Do you see? And then he a asks, where are we? Dan answers, we're at the gas station. And once again, he says, no, we're not at the gas station. The only thing you absolutely know is that you are right here. And then he says, every single time you find yourself, uh, your mind drifting to other times and places, I want you to snap back into the present moment. And that's also what I want you to do. Every time you find your mind wandering about the laundry, what you're going to do tomorrow, something you're worrying about, something you should have said in a conversation, then snap your attention back and focus on what you're doing right here and right now. Because the present moment is the only place that we really have any power. We can't uh, do anything about the future or we can't do anything about the past. But the only thing we can do anything about is what we'll do right now and what we'll think about right now. So this is really letting it go. Another way of saying that you need to let your thoughts go when they start wandering. Let us snap back. Then happiness equals your satisfaction divided by your desires. Develop the capacity to enjoy less. Flow, go. Let you really feel into your feelings in the beginning and before you let them go. Let it go. When your thoughts wander, just let it go no matter how important you think it is. Knowledge versus wisdom. Knowledge is understanding something and intellectualizing about it. Wisdom is having done it and really feeling how it's being done. So that was a quick look at the way of the peaceful warrior. Thank you, Dan Millman. Well, now, what is the one idea that resonated with you? And how can you apply it to your life starting right now? I hope you enjoyed this video and that you continue to actualize your potential so we can create a better world together. Thanks for watching. Have another awesome day. See ya.